Um, so for a review of the school district vendetta against the bus driver, you know, the same school district that concealed the wrongful, reckless driving incident with the superintendent running his car through that elderly woman's leg and collarbone, that school district that has the vendetta on the school bus driver for accusing them of wasting millions of dollars, which it looks like, indeed, if this lawsuit plays out, she was very prophetic. So anyway, in the hearing yesterday, the hired judge from Tillamook, who's sitting on this terribly conflicted case, which speaking of conflicted cases, Kirk Wintermute is uh, supposedly the judge for Heidi Wintermute's colleagues. Uh, leg personal injury on the Epling case. It makes no sense. But anyway, um, since everybody has to recuse and no lawyers can represent Miss Reinica, she's been denied complete amounts of justice. But what was so notable about yesterday's hearing is how polite and measured um, this lovely attorney was. Um, she's from uh, Tennessee originally, which I hate to say, Tennesseans can do politeness a little nicer than um, I, <laughs> I see around here. But um, she's a lovely lady, Amanda Benjamin. But she said she went to the this superior judge or like the circuit court judge for the county. And she said, basically, can we, is it time to dismiss this yet? Can we get this dismissed? And you know, this, this whole delay with absolutely no counsel for this woman, for this long protracted double whammy of a whistleblower hit that started with the Jeff Hazen, the guy who mismanaged the finances of the bus district, of the public bus. And then Ms. Rainica was doing whistleblowing in Seaside, whistleblowing at Astoria School District, and whistleblowing at the Transit Center. Um, it was just so nice to see Amanda be so polite and measured in her response. It turns out she had a uh, judicial review pending, so her behavior would be spotlighted and reviewed by Rachel Mortimer over at judicial review. So it was just lovely to see her being polite. It was lovely to see that she's trying to get this case dismissed because it's clearly going nowhere with this absolute denial of the right to counsel, denial of due process, denial of speedy trial. And all these abundant conflicts of interest have made it a particularly distressing case because it arises in whistleblower retaliation, undue ethical influence with the Heidi Wintermute begging the district attorney to prosecute this woman who'd already faced wrongful termination and was suing civilly for wrongful discharge. It's very, very distressing and... The sort of awkward news was that the superior judge or the head of the county, which has been Macintosh, but I don't know if it's transitioned yet to Bo, um, said, oh, well, we'll just carry it on a little longer till July. Um, and then Emily said, oh, but he has a conflict of interest. So I took it she meant that it was or she understood it to be Bo Peterson who's just postponing it a little bit longer probably to de-escalate the absurdity or the preposterousness I mean the longer we wait the longer nothing happens in this case at any rate I realized my mind and body was processing it as a win and um, there were no you know awkward moments Nobody was called any names, and poor Emily's suffering some kind of arm fracture, so she's slated for a surgery, which just makes me feel like the stress she's been under with this case is really caught, like leading to circumstances of harm to her life financially and otherwise. And then additionally, um, she mentioned like any progress on the motion to dismiss, a similar case referring to Heidi Wintermute's husband, Kirk Wintermute, has this little nonprofit run by the felon meth dealer, Ozark Iraq, who discriminates against women and is a noted embezzler now, according to numerous sources of uh, state money for the homeless and denying homeless services. So Kirk Wintermute um, had been mismanaging that nonprofit and allowing Ozark Iraq to try to get trumped up charges on me for recording Ozark abusing 
uh, my domestic violence advocate and I on a phone call and Emily cited that case is dismissed and Alex Thomas, the young deputy, got a little kind of testy or nervous or contentious about that, saying, no, the circumstances were entirely different. The, and that maybe that being it was a phone call and it's legal to record phone calls, so he's being prosecuted for a legal act. But arguably, the executive session that would, in my mind, be a, a rule and a protocol violation, not an actual crime, as uh, dear Ron Brown is trying to assess, um, for Heidi Wintermute's benefit to persecute and possibly for Craig Hobbs's benefit also to distract. I mean, he was, I believe, one of the letter writing campaign to pressurize the class of DA into persecuting this poor woman. Um, the, uh, Alex is like, oh no, it's totally different circumstances, but the executive session was also a phone call. So it was actually protected phone call recording and executive sessions maybe have some particular organ statute please bring them out guys if you if you have that statute but really even if there was a alleged wiretapping violation in the facebook post in which miss reina k gained evidence of wrongdoing and misconduct at the school district should she not be lauded as a brave whistleblower as a person who was willing to go above and beyond for the safety of the children of the astoria community and the safety of the parents and the taxpayers' budget? Shouldn't she be lauded as a hero? A brave and courageous woman willing to call out the absurdity of the fiscal mismanagement of the school board budget? Even if she's possibly... You don't even have to agree with her to recognize that her intentions were noble. But in this county, it appears the tendency to try to silence and stomp down on whistleblowers is a bit off the hook, but I believe we are now in the off-ramp phase of the ridiculous, preposterous, retaliatory whistleblower prosecution of Emily Reinecke on behalf of Heidi Wintermute and the Astoria School District to distract the public and the Daily Astorian from the real issues, perhaps such as whatever Craig Hops is hiding besides running his car through an elderly woman's leg.